Good yeah, morning. morning. From Abu Dhabi. We have just rocked up to the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque and we're looking forward to going inside. Getting here wasn't that easy because while there is a bus stop right outside of our hotel, you can't actually buy tickets at the individual bus stop. You have to go to the main bus station, which fortunately for us is a 10 minute walk away from our hotel. And you have to get an Abu Dhabi card, which is basically like an Oyster card type situation. And the machines that you can buy it from only accept cash. So we had to line up, which took a little bit of time to buy the card with our credit card. But in the end, it all worked fine. The card itself, I think, is 10 dirham. And then we loaded it with 10 dirham because we knew that that would get us through what we want to do today. So in total, each card was 20 dirham, which I think works out to eight Canadian dollars each. So let's go explore. Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque is the largest mosque in the United Arab Emirates and it was built between 1994 and 2007. The reason why it's called the Sheikh Zayed Mosque is because it was Sheikh Zayed who was the president of the UAE at the time who actually commissioned this project in the first place. However, in 2004 he actually died and so to commemorate him he's now buried in the courtyard of the mosque. The overall site spans 12 hectares, so 30 acres. And the mosque can hold over 40,000 worshippers. Unlike other mosques, this one holds four minarets, each of which measures 107 meters high. There are seven imported chandeliers that feature millions of Swarovski crystals. Among the other very important and beautiful architectural features, one of the main ones, which is a Guinness World Record holder, is the carpet, which is in the main hall. It measures 5,627 meters squared, so over 60,000 square feet, and was made by around 1,200 to 1,300 carpet knotters. It is so big that the weight of it in total is 35 tons and took two years to complete. finished with our visit to the mosque and we couldn't really film in there because they are very strict about where you can film and talk and take photos. They're also super strict on their dress codes. You have to have your ankles and wrists covered as well as your hair. But other than that, it is one of the most stunning mosques that I have ever seen. I always get this sense of calm and serenity when I go into mosques, and this was no exception. The, it is just so light and airy, and the walls are just so beautifully adorned. I don't know if it's like a ceramic or a marble with like gorgeous flowers and swirls and intricate designs. The chandeliers are absolutely out of this world. They themselves are massive. You just get the sense of grandness, but yet it's not opulent. It's beautiful and gorgeous and serene. It's just incredibly impressive as a sun. You can tell 
the over the 14 years that this took to construct, that every single detail was really carefully constructed. Everything was thought about, everything was intricately designed, and it is just a stunning, stunning structure, let alone just a place of worship. It's an amazing feat of architecture in itself. And it was just a genuine pleasure to get to go in. I know that aspects of the visit are very highly sanitized and controlled, but if you're willing to go along with that, then what you get in return is incredible and definitely worth the visit, especially since it's free. So that's even better. Yeah, I love anything that's airy and bright, yet somehow incorporates intricate design and color, and this just has it in spade. So definitely come here. Well, this has been lovely, but we've got some more stuff to see. So, but first, a pit stop for lunch. All fueled up, we're on to the next place. Welcome to Casa del Watan. This is the Presidential Palace and it was built between 2010 and 2017, but it was open to the public in 2019. It's a working palace, so no one actually lives here. The President, Vice President, and Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi have offices here and it's just used for state visits and foreign dignitaries. Let's take a look inside.
how do we get jobs so that we are important enough foreign dignitaries to be invited here? I would love to be received here multiple times without having to pay a single cent. That would be great. This place is absolute luxury. It is massive and it is gorgeous. So we learned that the exterior is made of white granite and limestone. And I think those same materials are used on the inside as well as wood. But the intricate detail of the mosaics, there are so many different mosaic patterns used to decorate every inch of this place. And I was saying to Nick earlier, whenever I come into these buildings, I feel this sense of peace and tranquility. And you were saying the colors that are used in here are blue, tan, white, and some gold. Those are all natural colors of the earth. So there's this harmony, which is why you get that feeling. And it is opulent, it is grandiose, but not in the same way that cathedrals are. I don't feel serene and calm in cathedrals. In here, that is just the overwhelming feeling I get. And maybe I prefer this because I haven't seen as many mosques or buildings that have this classic Arab architecture to them. And I've just seen too many cathedrals. But it's just so light and airy and open and spacious and bright. I love it. Me too. This is definitely not the first time that I've said this today, but it's just every single square inch of this place has been intricately thought out. Down to the very last detail, like we were even going through some wooden doors into a boardroom and even then, little patterns, not a single inch was out of place. And then with that, then you have the mosaics, you have the decorations on top of the domes, inside the domes, and everything has just been carefully curated, carefully crafted, and incredibly well thought out. Like definitely coming to this country has given us kind of a completely different view of the Middle East in general, mm -hmm. because I think up to now, certainly with the likes of Jordan, Egypt and everywhere else then that's kind of given us a sense of the history of it mm -hmm. and what it used to look like back in sort of medieval times and so I mean case of ancient Egypt like way 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 before that but this is really a look at the outlook of modern Arab nations mm -hmm. like this is really a sense of like if each of these countries had the resources to be able to build new buildings and this is exactly what they would look like and it's just it's beautiful really yeah i've really enjoyed my time here in the uae Me too. and i would not hesitate to come back in no. fact i think we plan on it for sure absolutely yep I didn't think I would enjoy it as much because I am so into my history and this has all been modern, but it's just been absolutely beautiful. So I was mistaken. As was I. I've absolutely loved it because it's just felt comfortable. Yeah. Actually. It's felt comfortable and maybe it's just also a nice break from what we have been seeing. Yeah. It's nice to mix it up every once in a while. Absolutely. But no, it's been really, really good. I think that's it for today though. So until the next time, take care. And keep smiling.